Alright, hey guys, today I'm going to be attempting to set up, uh, let me turn this offline real quick, uh, DualShock 4 with the Amazon Fire Stick. Sorry about that. Uh, it's showing, right, sorry, I gotta switch this over to Capture. And now we can see the Amazon Fire Stick. Alright, so we're going to try to hook up the DualShock 4. You'll need a few things. You'll need, a, of course, a DualShock 4 controller and an Amazon Fire Stick. We also need a USB uh, cable for your DualShock 4, and to get the address that we're going to need, you will also need uh, ADB installed on your computer, or the Android SDK. I have another video that shows how to do that. Just watch the beginning of it in the link that should be in the description. And the last thing we're going to do is you're going to also need, uh, what is it, 6-axis pair tool. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and use all the default settings. And while that's going, uh, you'll probably have to drag and drop ADB like shown in the other video. And we're going to do connect. And here you type in the IP address of your um, Amazon Fire Stick. I also show that in the other video. Just for the sake of time, I'm just going to skip that part because you need to watch the other video anyway to learn how to set up a uh, remote connection. Oops, okay, I didn't set it up properly, so I guess I'll have to do it the same way you guys do. Oh, here it is. <coughs> so just drag and drop ADB, and then do type in connect, and then type in the IP address. And I should go ahead and connect you. First thing we gotta do is ADB shell, which will let us. I forgot to do that again. This will let us um, actually have a terminal connection to the Amazon Fire Stick. All right, and once you've done ADB shell, you will be able to go ahead and type in this command. Once the shell comes up, settings get secure Bluetooth address. I'll have a link to the page if you want to check it out yourself to copy and paste. Or I'll ha probably have this in the description, this line right here. And now we'll need to run 6-axis pair tool. Sorry about my uh, voice and stuff. I have a really bad cold and it's probably not going away anytime soon. Alright, it will install the driver. Apparently the installation can take some time. And there we go. Here is our current master. I think this is actually my phone. So we want to have our new master. Uh, if you're using Windows, you can just copy and paste. Highlight. Or right click on it and mark, then highlight it. Right click copy. Go over here. Right click and update. And now it's proper and whatnot. So I gotta press down like nine times or whatever. Alright, now let's go to get controllers. And Bluetooth game controllers. Press OK. Then do add new Bluetooth controller. Alright. And now all we have to do is unplug your controller from your computer, then press down the share and power buttons at the same time. And it should start blinking on the little LED thing. On the front of the controller, it'll start blinking. And it should show up after a few seconds. It'll take a while. Mine already started blinking. As you can see, it has not shown up yet. All right, now before we click on wireless controller, we're going to turn off our PS4 controller by holding the power button. Now once it's off, go ahead and click wireless controller. And then turn your controller back on. See if this works. All right, now it turned gray. Let's see if we can actually use the controller in game. There we go. Controller online. Awesome. 
Now let's go ahead and try to play a game. All right. Our controller is paired. Okay, that's a little bit loud. All right. Okay. It looks like the share button was okay. And it's actually working. All the buttons are not mapped very well, but it's actually working. Let's go ahead and down. The D-pad works. There is some delay, though, so if anyone knows how to fix that, that'll be great. Okay, I have to press the share button. All right, yeah, Sonic, sure. Pressing share to select is really weird. Um, I guess share counts as start. All right, let's get into the game. I wish I had a webcam so I could show you guys I'm actually pushing the buttons, but I mean, if you try it for yourself, it, you shouldn't have any problems. All right, now this will definitely tell us how much latency is. All right, I can move left. I can move right. There is some noticeable lag, I think. That's going to be a problem. Definitely. Okay. Circle is jump. Oh, this is... This is not so great. It's working, but there's some noticeable lag. Okay. Yeah, it's a good... I don't even know how long this is. Let's see. Oh, I actually have to hold down the button. Okay. Oops. Apparently I can push in the thumbstick to pause it. I'm playing on a TV right now, so my voice isn't going to be perfectly matched up to what's happening on screen. Okay, so it looks like there's, um, it's just not picking up the inputs all the way. Uh, like I have to actually hold it down for like a couple seconds maybe, or like a, almost a second. All right. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. All right. Yeah, it's a good second delay between what I ha what I push and when it actually happens. Again, your what you're seeing on the screen is a little bit slower, but I mean, it's actually <coughs> it works, just not quite playable at all. So uh, hopefully, someone will know of a way to make this a little bit faster. I don't know how it would work uh, but I mean I'm sure someone out there is a lot smarter than me and can probably figure out how to get this actually working faster but as you can see I'm actually able to push all the buttons I could pause the game and do stuff um, I I don't know what else to say um, this will definitely need some work this isn't a perfect solution uh, but both the Amazon Fire controller and the other one are both sold out at the moment, so I mean this will at least let you pretend to play some games. <coughs> but the buttons are sticking and there's a lot of latency, so I mean I don't, I don't really know what to say about other than it's not great. It's not even really playable. Uh, I'm trying to use a D-pad now. And it's a good, uh, somewhere between like a half, I think it's like a half second delay. This is completely unplayable. But, I mean, it works. You got it paired, so I guess I'll just leave this up to the rest of you smart people to try to figure out if there's any way we can cut down on this latency and lag. But this actually is a proof of concept, so you can see that it does actually work. Uh, you can try it out for yourself. There's no hacking required. All you have to do is just turn on developer mode, uh, which I showed in my other video. And then connect to it and you'll be hey, good to go having it connected at least. I mean, if nothing else, you could probably use this as a remote if you lost yours and don't have a smartphone, uh, which you need to set this up anyway. So if you, in case you lose your remote, you can always have this paired and it will do that, but I just don't know why it's laggy. Uh, if I find anything else, I'll post some annotations. If you guys know anything else, uh, let me know. Uh, okay, I guess that's it. Bye.